Is this your usual reaction towards insects? Because that was definitely how I used to react to insects. But after learning about biodiversity and natural history in Singapore, I am no longer that scared of insects because I'm more aware of the inherent value of them. You might be wondering right now, what even is entomology? Well, we asked an expert to find out. Uh, I'm Arjun. Uh, I'm an entomologist uh, and a curator in the Conscious Natural History Museum. As a student who went through a module on biodiversity and natural history in Singapore, I engaged in three tasks taught to us by Mr. Fu Maoshong, a scientific officer at the Lee Kong Chien Natural History Museum. Let me take you through some aspects of the life of an entomologist. Step one of being an entomologist would be collection. Step two, processing. And step three, preserving and publishing. Here, we have the equipment that we need. A handheld net, an aspirator, vials to collect the insects, a tray, a leaf litter sift, and some yellow plates. On top of equipment, you will need to be properly attired. You will need to wear covered shoes, long pants, a comfortable t-shirt, and a hat if you like. Hmm, but wait, something's missing. Oh right, having a friend along is always helpful. Our first collection method is the setting up of a malaise trap. The malaise trap is a large tent-like structure that has a large opening at the bottom to allow insects to fly into a tall central wall that directs the insects upwards into a cylinder that contains ethanol. The location and placement of the trap is also very important. The trap should be positioned to maximize the number of flying insects that pass through the opening. Next up, we have the yellow pan trap. This method uses small yellow plates filled with water mixed with a little detergent. Yellow is chosen as many insects are attracted to the color yellow. Insects that land on the surface of the water will then sink and drown. The insects are then retrieved after straining the liquid solution through a fine sieve. Our third collection method is the leaf litter sifting method. We first collect leaf litter and place the material to be sifted into the leaf litter sieve. Then, we shake the sieve and release specimens that fall through the holes of the sieve onto a white tray. The fourth collection method we were taught is the beating method. You can use any long object to beat the bushes, but here we used our handheld nets. Beating the bushes will cause the insects to fall down and we can then collect them. Lastly, we have the collection method called netting. Here we use our handheld nets and sweep through the air or sweep vegetation in a figure of eight motion. Once an insect is captured, you raise the end of the net to allow the insect to move towards the top of the net. You then reach underneath the net with your hand and approach the insect slowly and carefully. Once you capture the insect with your hand, you go on to place it into a vial or an insect pouch. However, in this case, we decided to let the butterfly go. After collecting all the insects, we move on to the second task given to us by Mr. Fu, processing. First, we need to freeze the insects. The low temperature inhibits movement and prevents excessive damage to the specimen. Kept frozen, specimens do not dry out as quickly, which will be beneficial during pinning and mounting. The second part of processing is pinning and mounting of the specimens. Frozen specimens need to be thoroughly thawed to ensure that appendages do not break off. Different insect orders require different types of pinning methods, but in general, it is important to make sure that all parts of the specimen can be seen easily, as each part is crucial in identifying the specimen. Each specimen should also have its own voucher labels, which will be pinned along with the specimen. The last of our tasks is preserving and publishing, which Mr. Fu himself will give us more details about. My main research interest would be what we know as the 
the Bratodians, right? The Bratodia. So basically, it consists of your cockroaches, your termites. When you find something new insect, you want to find out exactly what other new insects are among them. Because there's always some kind of interactions on how insects are dependent on each other, or how they might even feed off each other. So, so you get a better sense of the picture of the entire environment, you know, whether is it uh, growing or whether is it actually degrading. So, yeah. And because we, are, you, we as humans, we are also dependent on the environment, right? Uh, be it for food, uh, ecosystem uh, services, and so on and so forth. Generally, others will feel that all oh, the termites they will destroy your house, they will destroy your furniture. Cockroaches are dirty. Cockroaches are affected with diseases. Uh, they are the cause of your allergies and so on and so forth. But if you were to have a better understanding of cockroaches and termites, you will realize that your cockroaches and your termites are actually part of this uh, nutrient cycle in the ecosystem. They are known as your guardian of the soil, otherwise known as the engineers of the soil. Right? They help to ensure that the soil is actually fertile for your trees to grow. And if you have trees, you have plants growing, you will support the entire ecosystem itself. What motivates me to insects itself right, is basically curiosity. Uh, how we actually all started itself was actually when uh, I was young, a kindergarten school student. You know, when you start to see things moving about, some others may just be creeped out by it, but I got interested and then went straight for it. Yeah. So each time I had, every time I used to see these small things that are moving about, it just finds, you know, it, I feel that there's something interesting. Right? And each time I find a new one, it's something that I've never seen before. So, each time it gets me more and more curious and to see what insects are actually out there. Thanks for bringing me along this journey. Entomology is really eye-opening and I didn't know such a specific research field existed before. No problem, I'm glad you could come along on this journey. Next time we see an insect, I hope you won't be that adverse. Is there a hymen up there? Huh?